nice drum roll that comes in there. All right, it starts off just with the guitar riff. Making a, you could make an E minor if you can't make, if your hand can't stretch to this, which if you're, depending on what strings you're hitting, if you're hitting all the strings, this is what we would call as a E minor add nine. Okay, and the board, and then you can zoom in on your videos now and pause and all that. So I'll get a shot of it later for y'all. But for now, E minor add nine, if you make what we know is the B power chord, but then hit all your strings. Because to the D, to the, um, to the E, adding the F sharp note is the ninth. You know, it's, it's the note after the octave so it's the second degree of the scale but in um the, the next octave okay so that's why it's a nine and not a set uh, not a two okay a nine is the same as a two a one is the same as an eight if you don't know what i'm talking about root note an octave please check out some of my music theory videos or anybody's for that matter just to catch up on that i'll be talking about that kind of stuff all throughout this um, however, I can try to keep it as simple as possible, just so you all know, whoever tries to <laughs> zoom in on the board, that was something I was writing out for somebody else that has nothing to do with what we're working on. Breathe from Pink Floyd is right here, alright? And what we have going on with Breathe from Pink Floyd is an E minor add 9 chord, which looks like a B power chord to us <laughs> that would know power chords which most people do because they can kind of all start with those. Second fret, fifth string. Remember, we count this way, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the frets, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Your fingers, thumb, and then one, two, three, four. Oh, notice I'm wearing a glass finger, a uh, slide rather, you know, so that I could do the slide parts. He has a, a lap steel he does it on, I believe. Um, pedal steel, they call it, or lap steel. Um, but it, in any event, now, he does this progression a bunch of times. And you can do it all at once. Two, three, four. Eight, two, three, four. Just to start. So, and then when you get comfortable making the chords, then I start to split it up. One and two. That's an A, you know, the A7, which is this, your fifth string, I'm sorry, your fourth string, second fret, and your second string, second fret. And then I, I don't, it's in all the strings of the guitar, so don't be too fussy about where you're hitting. Just try to not bump the adjacent strings, though, because you don't want to cut those notes out. And then what we call the A sustain, too, is adding the D note, so if you take this A7. What's making it a seventh is that you're dropping the A root note, which is the middle one that we're taking our finger off of, right? Otherwise, there's your A chord. For a lot of us, we just, just do this for the A. Open A string. But, however, to do the A7, with that, we're taking the... And by the way, when you, when you see a, um, a chord and it's written like A7, that's, that, that means A dominant 7. So the formula is actually the flatted 7th of the scale. I don't want to confuse you. Once again, you don't have to have the theory to, to play along with this, but it sure does help. And a matter of fact, I would recommend that you use the song as a way to catch up on your theory. That would be really cool. Make me feel good about that. All right. Now, so, it, you know, switching back and forth between a version of E and a version of A. That's what's going on here. And then if you can make that E, you know, minor add nine chord, that's gonna add a lot of mysterious sound as compared to just, which 
which works. It's very, it's only a small difference. So that's why I, I still show it to people with the E minor. And then you just drop your middle finger down one string and then you skip a string and put this finger down and then the A string over here. Now, doing the correct process, going back and forth between the E minor add nine and then not just the A7, but he does go A, A7, you know, and then A sustained four. The A sustained four, like I said, is when you're adding the, the D in. Because if you counted all the notes in the A major scale, or the key of A, I should say, then you would see that the fourth note in that is D. So if you, you know, if you're playing the A chord and you suspend it's not like getting suspended, like throwing out of high school. This is that you were hanging on to it, right? We're suspending it, suspend the four. So let's see now. Uh, da, 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 da. So you can, people that are barring the A this way, so you come off your E minor. And you listen to the little picking. This way, so you can be, see both hands. Starting on the root A, of course. And I'm just barring an A chord here. So I throw that D in, you know, so. So. from the seventh chord, same thing. Sorry. All I'm doing there is just outlining the A chord. Here's my five fret A. Here's a little major outline. My God, that opens up a can of worms. For, you know, it's a million songs. And I can't play things too exact. If I tie too many notes together, they're copyright claiming the heck out of all my videos anymore. So I don't want to play two seconds of a song and then good old Van ends up with the royalties for all my videos for the rest of it its existence on YouTube. So at in, in any rate, um, let me now make sure the part that's coming up, it could be a separate video, but I'm just gonna tag it on to the end of this one instead of making part one, part two. Um, you can always just come back later if you want another 10 minute lesson and just continue this one. Just continue this one. Easy enough, right? I could call it part one and then part two. Some Something suggests that I would do have a better channel if I did it that way, but eh, for the guys that want all of it right now, I want to give it to you right now. So watch. You would have, like I said, this E minor, uh, or this, yeah, E minor at nine. And I do like to strum it this particular way where it's kind of like boom. start out, you know, if, um, if you're just learning the chords, just stick with the E minor. If you could do the stretch, then, then, you know, move right up as soon as you can to the real chords that he's doing, of course. Fantastic. 
Like, Gilmore really is, he's really a hero of mine, I'll tell you, um, as far as guitar playing goes. Oops, sorry, so it's starting on the A string, and I'm going uh, uh, four strings down. Bum, 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 bum. And then I'm coming back up to, and then I'm skipping the G and going back to the B string, but I'm going and adding that over here, sorry. Instead of just this, I'm going to add that to it, so it's kind of like, let's see. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to look at the camera instead of uh, paying attention here. Apologize. Drum roll, dun, 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 dun. and this goes into the second part of the song. It, it's um, kind of like. Let me just put this here. I just want to show you guys a few things here. You see, you got just so you can get a close and look at in, at these chords that that we're doing. The C major seven. It's basically just your C chord, but without your first finger. But I prefer if you use the fingers that I, I have written in here, and it's for a reason, is to make the next chord you're going to, which is the B, right? It's, it makes that a lot easier because you just slide in your second finger then. It's important, you know, if you find that your hand finds it easier a different way, by all means, please use what you work, work you know, whatever works best for you. That's what you're going to use. But I would try and suggest that you try uh, the way I'm showing you first just because I may have already tried all the other ways as well and found out that this might be the most efficient way to do it. All right, my friends. Now, so it goes from this E to the A, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes he's doing the A major. drum roll comes in you got the C major 7 that's the first one now most people would just think of the C chord you take your first finger off and C major 7 voila ski voila 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 but if you were already like this and then this Right from here, you'd be going to that C. So, you know, you could take the easy, the easier move right now and just add that finger there and then. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Before it goes into that part, before it goes into that part, I want to show for those that are capable, the, the little slide part. It's very easy if you play slide already. And if not, you can just do it with your fingers. Watch. And when I'm doing, I wear the slide on my pinky, but let me just tell you what frets to push on. Whether you play the slide or not, that's a whole different thing. And I can't give you a slide lesson on top of this one. It can be a couple hours long. Um, it's it's not as easy to just put it on and do it. It doesn't work like that. But I'll show you the frets that I'm hitting is, you know, first string, that F sharp note, which is the, right there. Um, 
I didn't mean to call it a suspended fourth note if I just did that. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, I'm, that's that's the nine, you know, the add nine from your E add nine chord here. Just up a couple octaves. It's, 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 it's this note in the chord, you know. It's the five. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the um, uh, F sharp of that of that E minor add nine. It's the actual add nine note. So he zeroes in on it. it that's like the note, right? He's hanging on that like a monkey on a tree, man. Watch. And then he slides, fills in, you know, from B to E. And then E, and then B, but only up a whole step to C sharp. And that C sharp note is a A chord. He's so clever, isn't he? <laughs> Masterful. I wonder if his ear is just that good, or if he, I have a feeling Gilmore studies as well. I'm pretty sure. He hears it, and he probably knows what the heck he's doing on the fretboard. It helps just to have an all or both. Okay, so if you want to put the slide on, you're just going to hover over the frets, I said. So over the 14th fret on that little E string. And I'm going to get the real sound like him, a little bit of vibrato. And uh, he slides the first note, actually. So usually you slide from about, about one step away. So I'm going to slide from the E to the F sharp. And then I'm going to go B to E. If you notice, I actually repeat on the Bass Katana amp. It sounds wonderful. Then he hangs on the E. And then B up a whole step to C sharp. Then that's where this doom, 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 doom. So I'm doing it. Looks like a G chord, but nothing down here at all. Just the top and move down because it's part of a C chord, really. You're not you're playing this part to the C chord. But rather than using these two fingers, I like this just because the next move just goes right here. But it, it doesn't really matter because if you do this for it. Sorry, that's uh, too loud. It eats the video up here. And then. From there, the B minor seven, um, which is second finger here. Okay, E. I'm sorry, the um, A string. Okay, and then you skip the string and put a finger down on the third string. It's still on the second fret now. And then, so after this little slide intro, you know, I would probably put the slide back in my pocket, or I'd have to fret it using it like this. And it makes it, it does make it hard to do. I wouldn't recommend it. I've been playing for many years, so I can pull it off. Most people wouldn't have a chance at it. I'm just saying, I mean, it's, it's a specific slide thing. It's not that I'm that good, good at the guitar thing. It's very specific to slide. I'm a geek. I just spent a lot of hours sliding. That's all. But in any event, you got it. 14th fret E string. And actually, to be to like the record, you can slide from the 12th to the 14th. And then a little vibrato. Gilmore makes his slide sound very um, human, you know. So people, at, towards the end of their notes, they put vibrato because they start running out of air. So if you go, ha, 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 you're only putting out, you know, um, a lot percentage less air than if you were just going, ah, you know, balloons totally going out rather than just, do, 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 do. all right. So that C major seven, B seven. So F major seven. Sorry. Instead of the F where you're barring over here. F major seven, you don't push the first string. I'm just cascading my hands. Second string fret one, third string fret two, fourth string fret three. 
and then the other ones are all over. The hardest part is not bumping the adjacent strings. That's the hardest part of that. So then we got C add nine, I'm sorry, C major seven, B minor seven. And then the next one, F major seven. And then G seven. Which is like a regular G, except for this high G note there. It's down a whole step, G g7 if it said g major 7 then here there would be a g a g major 7 would be here because you, you flatten this the set you add the seventh which would be the note right before the root whole whole half whole 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 half so the note right before it is your seven number seven so anytime you want to make a seven a major seven chord you add the note to the chord that's right before the root note so okay now, if you want the dominant seventh, which is just written the letter, A, B, C, D, F, G, whatever, and then just the number seven after it. Kind of like the one on the board, because this song, we're just kind of like the A7, and then um, so oh, down over here, I have the other part. I don't know if you can see it. I'll, let me tip this for a second, uh, just so you can see it there. Um, see on the bottom of the screen, E, at, e minor add nine to A7 back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And then... It's going to just go through this chain. C major 7, B minor 7, F major 7, and then G7, and then D7 sharp 9, and then D7 flat 9. Let me show you those. The D7, the E7 sharp 9 is the Jimi Hendrix chord. <laughs> Literally. That's what they call it. about the copyright thing i gotta be careful i don't want to blow a, a nice long video over a couple seconds but anyway Jimi hendrix seven sharp nine chord and that's the e so if you just take the d seven sharp nine you're just moving it down a whole step literally that's what the chord is and i don't hit the six or the first string in it that's your first one D, seven, sharp, nine. Well, I mean the first of the, of the last two. <laughs> and then this note is the sharp ninth. There would be the ninth. Here's the D nine chord like this, or like that, right? The D sharp nine sharps that one note up. And then if you want the D flat nine, you go from the nine here, you have to add that note, the flat at ninth. That's how music works. It's all little formulas. So, the way my hand would do that easiest is go, and I take my pinky off, and I just bar my first finger there, and then that grabs the note needed there. It's a nice sounding chord. Not, I mean, out of context, it doesn't sound too good. But in context. No slide, no problemo. 14, you slide from 12 to 14, and then add some vibrato, but not right off the bat. Most singers don't just ha ah, 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 ha ah, every single note, right? It's usually to hang on to the air, like I said, so we... And then you get a little bit in, in, in of, of vibrato after you're already on the note. And then B to E. And then E, you're already on it. And then now your B or your seventh fret to the ninth. 12 to 14. Seven to 12. 
12, 7 to 9, da, da, doom, boom, boom, C major 7, B minor 7, and then F major 7. Just like comes from the regular full F chord, except we're not playing. We need we're leaving that one go so we can get the E note there. That's a major seven because E F right is E is the note right before the F. So if you're adding that to this, then you're getting the major seven chord. So we add the E note. So now for an F chord, we want this E here, and we open up the bottom finger from barring this F, and that gives us the F major seven. Beautiful chord in the right context. These are all great in the right context. All right. And then after that is G7. So I just take these fingers, go up to your G chord, down here to the first fret. Let me see. D7 sharp nine. D7. Flat nine. Let me get real close on that one for you. Watch the pinky. This appears, and then the first finger is going to flatten out and catch a whole step before the pinky right here. So, I'm oh, sorry. I'm not hitting the six or first string at all, okay? Matter of fact, I'm resting my finger on it here so I don't hit it. And then up here, I got the palm of my hand on it so I don't hit it. So I, I can just, you know, um, acquired feeling. And then, what you got? Coming off the G7. Second fret, every other string. It's like no open fret, second fret, open fret, second fret, open fret, second fret. Nice easy pattern for your D minor seven chord. And the hand kind of cascades back normally on that one. You shouldn't have much trouble anybody making that. But then the F major seven. So you just look. Cascade from this direction if you want. Make sure your hands just don't juggle around, not knowing what to do. Have a plan, okay? You know, for this one, I you can start from either down here. You know, you're not going to be on the first string, so you're, you can let your hand feel that first one, and then you're just cascading it back. You're not you're not skipping the string. Or you can look if you want to. You know, if you have the ability to look over your guitar and see your hand right there. Sometimes it's not the case from where you're standing on stage or just standing here making the video right now, I can't see the bottom of my finger from my perspective, from where I, I'm standing. I don't know if I can go back further, I'll show you what I mean, but I'm kind of cramped out with gear on the floor here. That's why I have the camera that way. God forbid, I don't want you to see how messy it is down here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, uh, so let me show you the change one more time here. C major seven. sharp nine d7 sharp nine yeah d7 flat nine i'm back 
This chord is, is is screwing you up from being able to play the song. Plenty of times I write it out and give this song as a very intro song, and we just use the E minor and the A minor and the A7 chord, which is just this. Watch, watch what I'm doing. The middle finger comes down one, and then skip a string and put this one. So it's not very difficult to learn. You're just going back and forth and back and forth from those two. And that's most of the sound there, right? So uh, it makes it easy to show that. When it gets to the other part, um, because you can do the whole song then, and not have to wait until you get up to doing that. Literally, a Jimi Hendrix chord, okay? It's not easy on the hand. So instead, you just play the note that's accenting the chord. And that's fair game always, you know? If my hand is sore and I was playing out, I would just hit the last two notes. I would hit the sharp nine. to say please hit the like button subscribe if you're not already a part of our channel i'm reaching towards a thousand subscribers i'm almost there i'm so happy uh once you have a thousand subscribers then the youtube algorithm kind of kicks in and starts showing your videos to other people and stuff like that uh, they take you more serious i guess once you prove to them that you'll continue to make videos i guess that's what it's about but in any event i hope you find it useful i wish you good health um, for your, you and your family, safety, good health, and then good happiness. Thank you very much. Wayne Sorbelli from Key West, Florida, signing off. Good night, good morning, or good day, whatever time it happens to be for you right now. Adios, amigos. <laughs>